You know, and mindfulness is energizing. Uh, yes, it, it's absolutely. People who misunderstand, because I say that we should be mindful all the time. Say, yeah. How can you be mindful all the time? Isn't it exhausting? And that's because they think of being mindful as uh, thinking. And even thinking has gotten a bad yeah. name. Thinking isn't hard. What's hard is the evaluation we add to it. You know, what right. if I don't think about it correctly? Yeah. Um, now, so that if you were mindful, I, the, uh, a way to, uh, that I try to persuade people that mindfulness is energizing is to make clear that it's the essence of humor. Okay. Oh, Some, yes. now, now, if I were giving yeah. a lecture somewhere, I'd tell a joke, but I don't dare when it's being <laughs> videoed. <laughs> that, um, but that what's funny, something is funny because you didn't quite get it at first, and you see whatever it is had different, if I told you that, um, oh, there was a clairvoyant uh, midget who escaped from prison. So, oh, yeah, there's a small medium at large. <laughs> That's why I don't typically tell jokes. It's not my day <laughs> That's job. That's good. That's good. <laughs> but anyway, so the point of it is that for, um, uh, for medium, when you hear clairvoyant, you don't think of medium as a clothing size and, you know, and so on. The unexpected. Right. And so um, is it hard to laugh all day long? Of course not. You know, and if you travel, what you do is have the expectation, the hope, you're paying, you know, for this trip to be able to see new things. And so, um, is traveling difficult? And again, if it were, people wouldn't uh, pay so much money for it. Yeah. And it's always interested me because we have things here, you know, that people um, go to look at buildings and churches and what have you in Europe, ignoring the buildings and churches. Um, and similar sites uh, right at home. Uh -huh. Anyway, so maybe I can tell you about one or two of the other studies. You're interested? Yeah. Oh, okay. very yeah. much so. Okay, so this goes back to the, the idea that our mindsets are limiting us. Uh -huh. So one of the studies that I'm particularly fond of has to do with vision. Mm -hmm. so the way we test vision, as you know, you'll take a look at an eye chart that has letters, black and white letters that go from large to small. Right. So what that <laughs> so what that does is implicitly create the expectation that soon we're not going to be able to see. Right. Okay. Well, what we did was turn it around. We created an eye chart that goes from small letters to large to letters, large. creating the expectation that soon you will you be will. able to see. <laughs> and by yes. changing the mindset, what happened is people can see what they couldn't see before. There's something else about eye charts that I, I don't remember if I wrote about it. I think so, but um, I've thought about it more recently. It seems so bizarre to me that we would have somebody evaluate how well we see by seeing a bunch of random letters connected to nothing. Right. You know, um, and uh, I imagine that if I'm looking at colors, if I'm looking at things that are moving, if I'm expecting you to come and I'm looking forward to it, I'd probably see you further in the distance and so on. So that uh, for me, if I couldn't see these little letters on a piece of paper, it probably wouldn't bother me anyway, as long <laughs> as the rest of my vision were fine. Yeah. My um, eye doctor in Boston has me read words, sentences, oh, yeah. and things. So it's always the same thing. And I've been going there for many years. So you years. know there's the words. And he shows <laughs> it to me. And, and last year I said to him, you know I know this by heart. I said, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, what happens is um, even if the tests were more accurate and you didn't, you know, know it by heart, it's still limiting. And that's the point yeah. of um, lots of what I write about in Counterclockwise, that yeah. we take these numbers that the medical world gives us, um, our tests, our cholesterol level, for example, and we hold it still. So I, again, when I'm giving a lecture, I might ask, does anybody out there know their cholesterol level? And usually that's somebody who's <laughs> very excited. I say, okay, what's your, and they'll tell me what their cholesterol level is, and I, I congratulate them. And um, I say, <laughs> um, and when did you have it tested? And they'll tell me, let's say, three months ago. And I'll say, and you haven't eaten or exercised since? <laughs> and if they don't understand it at that point, I'll say, and if you never get it tested again, you'll die a healthy person. <laughs> you know, we're given the numbers, and we hold everything still. And, yeah. you know, that um, that's bad if the numbers are good or if the numbers are bad. Because if the numbers are good, then we don't pay attention to things because we think we're healthy. And we overlook signs that uh, we would attend to otherwise to fix ourselves, almost like with a car, you know, yeah. that if you're driving and you're mindful, you notice a slight 
difference in the engine or the brakes or what have you and then it's easy to fix if you're paying no attention and totally oblivious then you don't notice it until the end until it falls apart exactly and then it's a a big expense and we do that with our bodies then if you're given numbers on the other end uh, you become so frightened that um, the stress is no good for your health and these numbers are only correlations They're, they're not predictors again of what your health is right and people should know more about their health um, they shouldn't need to rely on all of these tests a- and I'm not suggesting we don't get the tests but still the tests can only tell us so much and there's yeah. a lot more information that only we're privy to so it's important that we start tuning in yes and I think some people go to doctors and they leave out the crucial piece of information so the doctor doesn't get the full story and they're basing their conclusion on uh, false premises and you go around with that assumption and it's totally wrong. No that's right Terry but I'm going one step further. I'm saying even if you give all the information the (laughs) doctor was trained in what is normative, what's true for most people. That doesn't mean it's going to be true in this individual individual. case so the only one who's going to know is me.